Welcome to day two of the AHEAD Spring Summit. I'm Tom Pullman, your virtual MC. Thank you for joining us. Yesterday we had four great sessions and today we have four more. If you happen to miss yesterday, don't worry. Those sessions will be available on demand later today or tomorrow morning at the latest. Again, our theme for the summit is automation at scale. And as I mentioned yesterday, our clients have told us loud and clear that adopting a comprehensive and scalable approach to automation is a top priority of theirs. So that's what we're talking about at this year's Spring Summit. We'll start off today hearing from two of our valued clients, the Mayo Clinic and United Airlines, on their own automation journeys and look at topics besides the, the underlying technology. Issues like prioritization, justification, skill set development, what an automation strategy looks like in practice. Then we're going to talk about the critical intersection between automation and observability. How you can link your monitoring stack to a correlation engine to not only reduce noise, but more proactively identify and remediate downstream issues thanks to automation. Before we jump in, I have a few simple requests. Submit questions, please. We want to hear from you. Submit them anytime by clicking the QA icon underneath the video console. Each speaker is going to take questions at the end of their session. You can also download some pretty cool companion resources and content by clicking on that icon that looks like a little stack of papers. Please visit our sponsor booths. They have great content to share in line with our theme of automation at scale. They're also giving away some cool prizes. And lastly, if you're kind enough to fill out our feedback survey, which we'd really appreciate, uh, another icon on your console to click on, you'll be entered to win one of five AirPod Max over the ear headphones that are really cool. We'd love to get your feedback. So thanks again for attending. Please ask questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to a head managing director of our advisory practice, David Williams, who will start things off with our client panel on prioritizing your automation roadmap. David and company, take it away. Thanks, Tom. And we're super excited to have our guest panelists here today um, to discuss how um, we should be prioritizing our automation roadmap. And today I'm joined by Jennifer Bristow uh, from United Airlines and Chad Betcher from the Mayo Clinic. And I am David Williams, Managing Director in our advisory practice here at AHEAD. Uh, so we'll begin, let's flow this way. Jen, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about introducing yourself, um, obviously, and talking about your role. Um, especially as it relates to the automation efforts within United. And Chad, if you could follow Jen and also introduce yourself for Mayo, and then we'll continue from there. Hi, um, my name is Jennifer Bristow from United Airlines. I'm senior manager um, over the automation engineering team. And um, I've been manager of the team for probably about six years and in the company 17 across network automation, sorry, network um, operations engineering, and even into the automation space. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for joining us today. And Chad, good morning to you. Good morning, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. My name is Chad Betcher. I am a service delivery manager at Mayo Clinic. Um, I have been at Mayo for 21 years, um, 14 of those years in infrastructure, and the last three years in this new new team, the automation services team. This team formed um, three years ago under the infrastructure division um, to stand up and centralize our automation opportunities and capabilities along with the tools in, uh, in infrastructure. Happy to be here. Well, thanks again, Chad. And we're really excited to hear two different perspectives, obviously from United's from a transportation perspective um, and as a major um, customer, um, within that within that industry, and then Chad, obviously from a, a pretty recognizable name within the healthcare and life sciences space. Um, so Jen, we'll turn it over to you. Why don't you walk us through a little bit of your automation journey? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um, as we've already done intros, um, I'll get into the very first slide. So this kind of covers what my team does, uh, the why, um, and even a lot of the core components and our accomplishments in what I'm about to share today. Um, the What you're seeing here is kind of who we are. So my team is comprised of a lot of developers, engineers, with a wide range of knowledge to automate different infrastructure systems. 
And these systems deliver services and platforms which our application teams and internal employees consume. Um, for example, uh, if uh, we help build the infrastructure components that stands up um, our environments that the AWS application teams consume um, or the app teams here at United do consume. We also stand up things like connections into our Active Directory and our identity management systems so that way they have a quicker connection and quicker speed up time for our employees. And we'll kind of go through a couple of those areas. Um, here in short though, the main purpose of our automation team here at United is to make sure that we are enabling and empowering others and driving efficiencies and making sure we're delivering and doing our best. Um, here is kind of a circle of everybody that we partner with, right? And so we work together with all sorts of technology groups from security to endpoint to operations to infrastructure, and we build a lot of advanced integrations just to simplify their processes. Um, and, in, and in short, a lot of that is code, APIs, writing bots, um, provisioning different devices across their platforms, and even doing things like restarting failed applications. The biggest thing to note, uh, and it's something that we drive home pretty heavily, is automation is often thought of as once, once a process hits that automation queue, uh, then it's ours. And a lot of times, uh, a little plug here is it's, it's not, right? We're not the process owner. We are not the engineer. We are not the security policy owner. We take all those things, as I'll show you two in the next slide, or in, in two slides, and we will kind of join them together. In our way to show how we build efficient infrastructure services, um, the slides here you'll see, we showcase kind of what a typical manual and semi-automated service would look like. Um, and a lot of that is feedback we even get from our customers of it's taking too long or the process isn't complete um, or I've done two tasks, but now I need to fill out another ticket to get another task done. Um, and so our main components that we want to drive through with a lot of these efficiencies is making sure that we are interacting with each system across the board without that manual intervention. So over the course of time, um, we have been, uh, I would say over the course of 10 years, uh, automation team has been there in United and we've gone from this momentum of automation is an afterthought to automation is a phase in a project, to now let's automate first. Why, uh, as, as we try to solve a lot of our, our like needs, it, usually it's a technology or it's a tool, but a lot of times we don't realize by investing in that automation side of it or the coding side of it or how that process should be put together, a lot of the things we already have are in front of us. And that's what drives what's kind of in the bottom here is the expected outcome, right? Many times we are trying to build a process that serves a need, but when we don't understand the outcome, if we don't know whether we want it measured, if we're not sure if it should have continuous iterations, it just becomes another task that was built in a different manner. And so a lot of the responsibility here at the automation team is we are to help take those processes teach folks if you have a system that's very well defined but labor intensive or many checkpoints and manual steps, how we can wrap that together and make it easier to process. So how it all comes together, you'll see in these slides are kind of pillars of five big boxes, at least for our team. Automation in a nutshell is stringing together multiple orchestrated tasks to build one big process, right? And under the covers, you have things like configuration management, software deployment, software management, the security components, continuous delivery, um, orchestration is huge, right? And that's just the process itself and those workflows. So the biggest thing to emphasis here is again, we take all those standards, infrastructures, code, and all the security policies and components, put it together with the tools, technologies, the teams, and then build that framework. So this slide here kind of shows the outcome of that framework. 
And that outcome is in each of these boxes, orchestration, config management. For example, right, we, I spoke about it a little bit earlier, but account creations. If you want access to one of our internal tools or dashboards, you fill out a ticket through our intake process. Um, our, we all use ServiceNow as a platform for here of our intake, and they will go through the backend components, make API calls, and essentially drop that ID in the right group. And then later on down the line, you'll get that tool that will pick up that access, and it works. And so the biggest thing we've been trying to do is, is broaden out our scope. Um, Automation United started with just servers and just how do I restart a service that failed on a server? And that was 10, 12 years ago. Now we've branched out to the end user space, the operations space, the server space, the cloud space, the app space, and we're, we're growing more and more every day and even into network uh, this year. Finally, lastly, I'd say our initiative this year will be driving driving home more of the top three things that we're outlining, which is our visibility, our culture, and our process. So like I highlighted before, it's a lot of, do I buy a tool to fix uh, something? Do I purchase a technology to change the way I'm working? And instead, it's how visible is it? What is the business outcome? And putting together some training programs that we can help grow the internal mindset and give them new skills to think automation first. And that way we can also evaluate the process because they're thinking automation, they're thinking code, they're thinking logic, can then say, how do we transform the processes we have instead of taking old processes, put it into new technologies, and hopefully we get a better outcome. Um, on the bottom here is just kind of to show our training development roadmap which we're leaning towards this year. Uh, it's just getting started, but we're super excited to be able to uh, spend that out. So uh, that kind of is in a nutshell of a lot of the things we're doing. And thanks for sharing all of that. Sorry, I was muted. Um, really appreciate you sharing and giving us a little bit of a glimpse inside behind the curtains of what's happening at United. Um, Absolutely, thank you. Really, thanks. It really resonated your message about efficient infrastructures, the building blocks and the pillars that United has, as well as your your focus on visibility, culture, and process transformation. Really appreciate that. Um, that leaves us to Chad. Chad, um, why don't you share a little bit about Mayo's journey? Absolutely, thank you, David, and thanks, Jen, for the uh, the story. We certainly are striving to do many and all of the things that uh, that you talked about right there. So great story and. Definitely interested to learn more from you as well. So mm -hmm. for Mayo, um, from a background perspective, where automation initiatives started, um, Mayo as a whole um, across IT is doing a lot of automation. And I know a lot of the companies and, and individuals that that we work with and our colleagues that'll hear this, that are hearing this message um, are doing automation. Most of the automation across IT and in infrastructure is done in silos um, and has been in the in the past and and as well as some in the current current state. It's done in silos. It's reactive versus proactive and and lacks awareness across the teams and IT of of the automation that exists. Um, additionally, it's uh, there's a lot of ad hoc demand models, so not very well defined. Um, and another challenge that we have talked about and, and discovered is our service management inconsistency. It's, it's inconsistently managed. There's scalability barriers there in terms of automation. And we also have tools overlap and underutilization as well. Um, so with that background and those challenges that we've, that we've had, um, our, especially in infrastructure and across Mayo IT that, uh, that I'll talk about here, um, we formed a team, uh, the automation services unit that that my team that I manage and and am responsible for within infrastructure. We formed this team about three years ago. Um, it does have alignment to the IT department vision, mission, and objectives for automation, um, but it also serves specifically our infrastructure teams. Uh, but much like Jen was mentioning, we are branching into. We're working with our operations area. We're working with our network colleagues, our security colleagues, across into our applications team, trying to bring a holistic view 
and learnings of what automation is happening across all of those uh, organizations. So what we've done in this team for an approach is we have uh, created an automation strategy um, as this team was formed um, and then moving late into 2019 and early 2020, we, we uh, started to form and work on an automation strategy that was completed. We actually are now moving into more of the execute, execution of that strategy at this point with a phased approach. Um, part of that strategy and one of the early uh, items that we're standing up is an automation center of excellence that my team is a part of or will be a part of as well as many teams across the IT organization. Other services that uh, my unit is responsible for, we have orchestration services, we have deployment automation, we're providing automated infrastructure provisioning, scripting services, and also are responsible for some cornerstone key automation and orchestration tools. For outcomes, um, basically in the three years that we've been a unit, uh, what we've done is we've established the unit mission and vision. We've also identified and uh, desired skill sets. I was lucky to inherit and bring along many talented individuals to this unit that came from the various infrastructure teams and database teams. They came into this unit with a lot of great skills, but certainly have been learning and maturing their skill sets and skilling up uh, over the last couple of years that we've been together. We also established, since this was a brand new team, we had to establish work management, workflows, processes and procedures, intake, how we were gonna manage, prioritize our work and work with our colleagues. Um, as I mentioned, we've created the automation strategy and are now in the execution of that strategy. And part of that is formation of that automation center of excellence. And then also we continue to identify with our partners in infrastructure and the surrounding teams We identify um, automation opportunities. So to dive a little bit into the strategy, just a, a high level, but a few details. What we, what the strategy really is, entails is a recognition of the need to modernize infrastructure management. So we're seeking to eliminate efficiency, inefficiencies, reduce our operational overhead and position the business to focus on rapid innovation and growth for differentiation. So, our strategy really focuses on several guiding principles, but really key ones are self-service, empowerment, transparency, and the use of a modernized shared platform. So part of this strategy as well, um, we, we actually are working with the head um, and they have, have partnered with us to come in and do an assessment. So a current maturity assessment um, of our of our processes, procedures, and automation in general, also looked at our tool chain. And then part of the strategy is establishing these guiding principles, um, recommendation of an automation center of excellence, recommendations of an updated tool chain, how we can better leverage metrics and KPIs, integrate, use and leverage DevOps integration and automation platforms and capabilities. And then of course, built a roadmap to our target state, which is absolutely key to, to the progress and the successes. So from a benefits perspective, uh, what, what this initiative has done, what this team, the formation of this team has, has yielded so far and with the help of AHEAD, it's we've established where are we with an assessment of our current state and also where do we want to go? So our future state roadmap has been built now and we have a plan and we have a path. Of course, that changes constantly with priorities and different um, initiatives and, and objectives going on within IT, but we have a plan. We know where we want to go. And that's from not only in infrastructure, but IT at Mayo has a very good um, plan and vision of where we want to take automation. Um, so part of that, and you'll hear me say it often, I'm referring to the center of excellence and a strategy. Part of that center of excellence is building that community with an I, within IT. And as Jen mentioned, automation first. It's building that community, thinking, starting to think and, and, and build towards that automation first mentality, which yields more proactivity. Um, it 
leverages industry best practices. We're all learning quite a bit um, and, and bringing those best practices into Mayo and into our automation, um, and then also a foundational tool, tool chain. And from a lessons learned perspective, uh, as I've been in this role for three years and, and even previous in, in my infrastructure uh, unit, we, we again, we were doing a lot of automation, um, but really trying to build a culture for automation. Um, so a lesson learned here, for sure, culture, culture is a challenge. Um, automation is critical to IT, to success in digital transformation, but it also can be a little scary. And we're trying to break down those, those barriers and, and those walls, if you will, um, from a culture perspective to know that automation benefits and, and help people to, to understand that automation can help all of us uh, embrace it, empower. It's certainly not to take over jobs. It's certainly not to to remove individuals from what they like to do. It's to really try to um, redirect those individuals to do strategic things, yield ROIs for the business faster, um, certainly uh, reduce costs, reduce risk, and, and increase our quality of service. So automation is a journey. Um, I learned that very quickly, but learn and, and continue every day um, that there's a journey. There's so much that can be automated and so many opportunities to do it, but you have to pick a starting point. You have to focus and you can build progress, get some quick wins and move on from there with that roadmap. And as I mentioned before, create a community. We're all only as good as the people around us, the ideas, the opportunities that come to, to the various groups to, uh, to yield that um, ROI, to identify what opportunities and prioritize what those are that give the best um, return on investment to the business and to Mayo Clinic. So create that community, build the, the community of people to educate each other, share knowledge, share code, share tools, share ideas. Um, and then to be successful, it's you need a strategy and you need a roadmap. Again, it's where are we? Where do we want to go? How do we get there? And back to you, David. Thank you. Chad, thank you so much. And Jen as well, thank you again for sharing a little glimpse again into your organizations and your experiences so far. Um, there's actually a lot of commonality, although you're very different organizations, there's a lot of commonality about your um, your journey so far and your approaches. And there's a lot of resounding themes. I heard a lot about strategy, about roadmap, and about fostering a culture, not just within your um, immediate teams, but also as you reach out to others within the community, within both United and Mayo Clinic. Um, I have just a few questions. Maybe we could, uh, there's different styles here. You know, I'm gonna ask Jen, maybe you some questions specifically to speak about United. Chad, I'll probably ask you some direct questions to speak about um, okay. things from your Mayo perspective. And then maybe we'll have some fun with this as well as we go on. But I'd like to start with strategy because that's where it really starts. You both mentioned how important strategy is to not only successfully approaching automation as a competency within your organizations, but also attaining the goals and objectives, the reasons you set out to adopt the automation approach. Um, so Jen, I'll start with you. How does your organization, United, keep various automation initiatives coordinated. Um, and yeah. another way to look at that is, you know, how did that strategy gradually take hold and spread throughout the organization? I think we're, I think we're doing a much better job at it now um, than we did in the past. Um, and a lot of that was even starting where Chad was talking about is being vocal and spreading that word. Um, the biggest thing that we probably take into account for is when we're planning our project, could automation be part of it? So all the way at the instantiation of an idea and um, the project starting phase or that envision phase. Um, so it's kind of where that comes in. Well, thanks, Jen. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds great, Jen. And Chad, you know, if you if you think about, you know, the approach that Jen just talked about, um, I want to flip that to the other side of the coin and think about the consumer side. How has the, your strategy and your culture changed for the consumers 
or the beneficiaries of automation? You talked about the benefits. Do you did you roll it out as a self-service to the end users, or is it more a tool just consumed within, you know, the IT infrastructure unit itself? Um, we have a desire to roll it out through self-service. That's definitely a, a future desired state. Uh, what we're doing right now, so my team and work is working a lot with with infrastructure, but then branching out into the IT, the various IT teams and partnering with them as well. Uh, so the business is consuming automation. Um, again, a large focus on automation within IT along with aligning to what those business needs are. We do have a self-service portal today and it has various services within it that can be accessed by end users. But we're looking to extend, ex expand that with service definition, um, and my team as part of our strategy is working with uh, with the ServiceNow team, with the other teams to start building that portal, defining those services, and then building out the automation and orchestration to be able to make it self-serviceable and be able to have the end users click that button um, to make the orchestration and the magic happen, if you will. And of course, you know, once you have that strategy, there's so many things that you could address through automation. And I'm sure you've both been through that and both have seen a lot of this and may even continue to focus and think about where can we go to next? How did you previously, as you began the journey or as the organization began the journey, how did how was it decided where to focus, where to prioritize um, your efforts first and then how, you know what to do next and so on and so forth? Um, maybe we'll start with you, Jen, again. Mm -hmm. I think we're much more organized now, um, especially as our leadership is looking towards more um, as automation is the forefront, just as much as cloud is where you build your apps, right? Um, and then on the where we've been is always, we start to realize, well, somebody's doing the same job in the same manner over and over. Well, can we do something different about that? And usually in the past, it was all about um, an inquisitive infrastructure engineer saying, gosh, I could code this better instead of just clicking buttons 10 times over. <laughs> and so really that's where a lot of it started. Um, and now and now it's just bloomed into let's, let's just automate as much as we can and process, uh, put the, those processes together. Thanks, Jen. Chad, do you have any thought, additional thoughts on that? I do. Um, yeah, so Mayo has, has long realized the value of automation, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of it going on. There's a lot of demand. Um, over the past several years, it was done within the units, and so led by the units, the divisions, the sections in the divisions. We have formed work groups that'll, that'll focus more and share knowledge. We do have a, over the last couple of years, We've had an automation and IT work group that brings together um, teams across IT to talk about automation, talk about their challenges, and what uh, what they're what they're looking to do. Um, in terms of getting uh, in specific into prioritization, it's it's a challenge for sure, and we're 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 trying to improve, as Jen mentioned. Um, so we, again, it's it's done at the unit section division level. What my team does, since we're dedicated in, in a shared service within infrastructure, we're starting to meet, or actually have been for quite a while, uh, meeting with teams individually very frequently every couple of weeks, and we'll ask them, what what are your challenges? What are your um, opportunities? What are your ideas? We catalog those, um, and then we have, we're using Azure DevOps and, and the agile process to be able to prioritize size those initiatives and, and then track them that way. Um, again, I'll put a plug in for the Automation Center of Excellence. Um, bringing that, forming that Automation Center of Excellence is a community-driven vehicle that can help prioritize. It helps identify what those opportunities are. It can prioritize those with the direction and alignment across those various teams and into the leadership as well. Um, one other thing I will say with prioritization is you get so many initiatives and opportunities going on. Uh, what we've thought about inside of Mayo is coming up with and needing kind of an economic model that helps you put some science behind it and a repeatable process that helps you identify what those opportunities are that are going to yield the best return on investment. 
So that's something we've been talking about as well to, again, put more repeatable process around it to make sure we're automating and working on the right things. I, I echo I that. That's exactly what we're doing as well. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that is the toughest spot, right? Is it the is, prioritization yeah. of yeah. of which which automation project a team works on next, um, yeah. knowing that there's an infinite number of projects going on across infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know what? That is all. That is good. But I'm going to actually come from it from a different approach. The, from what our, what we've seen and what I personally have seen is sometimes there's resistance to automation. Have you guys encountered any resistance within your organization to automating things that were previously manually done? And if so, how did you how did you approach it? For for the sake of our viewers, how did you handle that resistance to get past that and get consensus? I think a lot of that is meeting where they are, right? Meeting meeting those folks, those teams where they're at, and it's not so much it's not so much saying, and I think Chad even mentioned this in, in some of his presentation on the security aspects around, it's not taking your job away, it's expanding your skills, and it's 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 helping us to think differently and do differently. And at the end of the day, for a lot of our leadership and the driving model of all our teams is we need to deliver. And we can't be delivering if we're always running through mud. And so if we teach us all how to deliver in the same manner, um, th that usually helps, right? When you get relatable on the content of how automation can continue to drive the same things that you're doing today. And in fact, I would also say, it's not that because it's automated and it's gonna go over here to this team, it's you've automated a task with us that you've brought to the table and that person still owns it. You have to still set that the ownership is still in their team. It's no longer like on an automation team. We're really just here to provide the pipeline to help with the integrations and a lot of those complex programmatic languages that we can bring to the table. But if, if the automation side and if the automation team is the owner of everything, we will never have enough knowledge to automate everything in IT, never. <laughs> and I think it's just, it's just that, right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And Chad, you know, I want to I want to follow on to a comment you made. You mentioned how critical the automation center of excellence was. So if you think about the approach and the comments that Jen just made, how, what was the role of the center of excellence to drive adoption within Mayo? Yeah, it uh, the center of excellence again, and and it it builds that community. Um, it. And as Jen said, and I think she hit it perfectly, it's that connection. It's connecting to those individuals and their teams and what they're doing, and you do it together, and you empower. So Center yes. of Excellence absolutely brings all of those groups of people together, and I can't stress it enough what that community means, but it also builds governance, establishes governance, it establishes standards, reference architectures, foundational tools that then empower all of these teams to do the automation. And as Jen mentioned, the automation team, as there are many of those that, uh, and formal teams like mine and like Jen's that are stood up, there we are not teams that are gonna own it end to end. It's to empower teams to do it, to provide the pipeline, the foundational tools, that governance perspective, that then allows them to go do that automation as well. Yep. Thank you, Chad. I'd like to look a little more into your teams because your teams, while they don't own it, they're definitely empowering and facilitating, right? They're kind of like the coaches to the organization on how to leverage automation. And Chad, you mentioned that you're really lucky to have the composition within your team coming from disparate areas within the IT um, department itself, you know, everything from database, networking, systems. Um, did you run into any challenges having people coming from different parts, different previous silos now coming together as one team? Were there any challenges you faced? Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the biggest challenges um, as you bring experts, subject matter expertise from different areas to bring them together, they what happened with us is they inherited or brought with them some automation or activities that they were doing within their teams that then moved to our team. And they kept doing those. So they stayed in their little silo, even within our unit. So we have critical areas of single points of failure 
that we are now trying to break down and and spread the wealth across all of the members of our team so we're not relying on that one individual to do windows automation versus database automation versus linux so we've we've started that process and it's been a journey in itself for the three years that we've been together um, i think other things other challenges is is learning more about automation and what it truly means in even cloud. I mean, there's DevOps, there's Agile, there's cloud. So these individuals brought scripting languages with them and knowledge of tools, but we've really had to learn DevOps and Agile and even more of the, uh, the best practices around automation, even as simple as code reviews and repositories version control we've had to do all of that and learn that even more because we were doing survival automation and task level automation in the past now we're trying to build that and be uh, be stewards of that so we've had to learn that more as well okay. yeah that makes a lot of sense jen how have you been able to cope with you know eroding skill rot or at least um countering skill rot and also addressing skill attainment as new technologies come out new types of skills come out new frameworks and methodologies around automation how's your team keeping up with that that's a good question um a lot of it it goes back to an empowerment and teaching a lot of the engineers to you know have that forward state of mind and always be looking for what that technology is that's out there. Um, we like to bring in occasionally some vendors just to say, hey, where are things going? We leverage Gartner quite a bit to say, you know, what is the latest technologies? Um, we'd like, you know, we, if there's forums or any sort of like ONUGs or technical forums or network forums, any chance we can get to say, let's, you know, take, take a couple hours out to go do some investigation on what this is. Um, and then on the other side of that too, um, a lot of times we try to do this to the best of our ability, but it's hard, right? Because you're always doing delivery and always doing project work. It's hard to say, let's you know go play in the lab for a little bit on a new tool and just see if it's worthwhile for our next project. Um, we, we do our best to try to add that time in. Um, mm -hmm. So lightning round, we're gonna have some fun here for a few minutes. <laughs> um, this is just a yes or no question, so if you could just say yes or no. Jen, do you have an automation lab within United? Yes. Okay. Not fully Chad? baked, yes. <laughs> okay. Chad, within man? Maybe no. That's the same answer, yes, but kind of informal. <laughs> Does maybe <Okay>. work? <laughs> yeah. Maybe is a good answer. We'll accept maybe yeah. as an answer. All right, we're going to see who stops, who gets stumped first. So one at a time, I'd like each of you to name one of your key automation tools within your team's tool chain. And Jen, we'll begin with you again. What's one of your key tools that your team uses? Oh, um, VMware Automation or VRA. VRA, Chad? Red Hat Ansible Tower. Okay, back to you, Jen. Ansible. <laughs> <laughs> you, have some, you have to do uh, something unique. Um, uh, GitHub Enterprise. GitHub Enterprise and Chad for that space. What do you use? Azure DevOps, GitHub. Azure DevOps. Okay, you you use both of them, Azure yeah. DevOps and okay. Um, what are you using for? Do you get into any assistance with your with testing? What do you use for testing? Not necessarily code testing, like app like application code, but to test your automation itself. Any particular? We tools? do use a little bit of Packer. Um, uh, mm. it's a chef, uh, sorry, I'm thinking of chef inspect now, <laughs> chef okay. inspect. So we use both chef inspect and Packer for some of our pipeline items. Um, but plenty of UAT code, like you said. Okay. Chad, would you guys? We, same thing. Uh, we are using Packer as well. Okay. Um, you know, cloud native is all the rage today, as you guys both know, right? How, are you... Within your organizations, are your cloud are you adopting cloud native? Are you do you have Kubernetes and containers and you know all of all of these newer emerging technologies prevalent within the organization or at least starting to be prevalent? Yes. There's definitely pockets of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that done by a different team or is there a tie back into your team to help manage the cloud native platforms? Either one of you can answer, whichever one wants to start first. 
I'd say for us is a tie back. Um, they have a different team that manages the infrastructure and environment, and then based on the provisioning pipeline, we may call into it. Correct. Exactly. Or the app team yep. calls into it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So same for you as well, Chad. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, I want to focus back out to the organization as a whole. Obviously, great skills, great many talented people within your teams, and some constituencies, right? Some stakeholders that you build tight relationship with. But how do you? How have you communicated your capabilities to the broader audience within both United and Mayo? How have you gotten the word out about what you're capable of doing to help them understand how they could take advantage of it? Any thoughts on best practices there? A lot of team meetings. <laughs> we do we do quite a bit of presentations and keeping up to date, uh, and even and even internally, um, not only just to the IT org, but maybe branch out to other orgs and go to their team meetings and kind of showcase what it is we're doing and why. Um, that helps quite a bit. Okay. I would agree. We're doing the same thing within infrastructure. We meet regularly with our key stakeholders. We also have an automation in IT work group that meets, and that again covers many um, many of the teams within IT or their their represented organizations. And then again, obviously, this or you know, I'll keep an, uh, emphasizing it. The center of excellence is going to be a key way to continue doing that. Uh, but to Jen's point, it's a lot of roadshow presentations. It's a lot of meetings to really just keep talking, keeping the the messages going, keeping the ideas flowing, and how you gain that trust with them when you can apply solutions and and thought to what their challenge is, and then they see the benefits of that as well. Awesome. Well, we're almost out of time. I'd like to ask you each one last question, and it's really about the lessons learned because I think our viewers would really like to know you know, what lessons did you learn that you could share that they could then take advantage of, right? So let's let's phrase the question this way. As you look back at all the great work each of your organizations has done to date, what are the one or two things that you wish you knew back when you started, but you didn't know, right, that you know now? What, what are some of the things that you said, man, if I had only known this when we previously did that? And Jen, we'll start with you. I know you're thinking through that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing that probably would have made a different impact, uh, say 10 years ago uh, till today, is making sure that we still allowed, we still instilled that the process owner owns their process. Um, I think that would be the biggest thing. Uh, we spent a lot of time where we would automate things. Um, and then once they were automated, they were kind of self-run and, and off and going. Um, but then over the life cycle of that automation, you got you know decay and technical debt and a lot of the stuff phases in, or you have processes built around that because the automation didn't do something specific. So you know, hear from the process owner that you know it's it's not quite a fine running machine anymore. Um, I would say that's probably one thing that we probably could have done better with in the beginning uh, a long time yeah. ago. No, that's really good, Jim. Thanks for sharing that. Chad, mm -hmm. any thoughts on lessons learned? Absolutely. A couple of things. Um, I think very early in the formation of our team, I would have I, I would have pushed and emphasized the need for the strategy immediately. I think the strategy, having that strategy and that roadmap helped us start to take off and helped us to then help others make sense and connect to what we were trying to do and where we want to go. And I think secondly, and very importantly, is how to interact with the people. Um, culture is huge, resistance happens, and it's just a lot of not knowing, not trusting perhaps. So no, learning and emphasizing the connection to the people and telling the story differently and approaching them differently to guide conversation would have been very helpful early on. Thank you so much, Chad and Jen. Well, I hope our viewers have learned a lot. I know I've learned a lot just listening to what you've shared with us today. Um, again, many thanks to Jen Bristow and to Chad Betcher for joining us today um, for this year's Automation Summit. And we wish you guys the best. Um, appreciate hearing from some of the most admired companies here, um, both United and Mayo Clinic. Um, thank you again very much. Tom, thank back you. to you. <laughs>